friends, I am the great floating disembodied head, Paul Ashman. <laughs> In and the I'm darkness. Right I'm right. Well, I, it felt thematically appropriate. Uh, I wanted to do that. That's Jesse over there. I wanted to do that itsy bitsy spider thing, but I don't know how to do it. It's never been properly explained to me. It's one of the sort of great regrets of my childhood. I also cannot hand drive. I don't know these motions. I vaguely know the Macarena has an up down thing, but I, it's about it for it's. I just I really lost out on these sort of like uh, these road sort of learn through memory dance crazes. Uh, on the plus side, I do know how to duggy. I don't know how to duggy. And That's kind of I, I ask, well, yeah, and the song is like mocking, because the whole thing <laughs> I'm supposed to know how to dougie, he's saying teach you how to dougie, teach me, teach me how to dougie. I actually yeah. asked Paul once to teach me how to dougie, and he refused. He flat out. Refused. That's because I I I know your game, sir. I knew that there's no possible way that we you know we're not that far generationally removed. I do not accept the fact that you claim. To not know how to thug you, but I don't believe it. There's no reason, A, why I would know how to thug you, and B, why I would lie there's, about knowing how to thug you. Paul's convinced ever, that my every move is some sort of Machiavellian scheme to get him to embarrass himself. You're trying, you're trying, to, you're trying to play a gotcha. Yeah, I'm going like, to teach you how to thug like, oh, Let me show you. And you're like, ah, fool, I knew already. It's like rickrolling. <laughs> I just learned about like last night, John Oliver. So I'm only like nine years behind that particular trend. Right. So we're doing Spider today. I'm excited for Spider. Um, well, for like one or two cards in Spider, but I like Spider. In theory, I'm a Shadowlands player. Shadowlands is back, baby. Well, I I don't know if it went anywhere. I mean, it won some code ties. We've been playing it. I've had a bunch of Spider decks. I I do think that. Uh, you're starting to see... I don't even know if I agree with that. I was going to say you're starting to see a more cohesive direction, but that's not true. Uh, but these are a lot of... There are a lot of playable spider cards in this set, um, so I think that that's, that's a bonus. Uh, how disappointed on you scale 1 to 10, no Uh 11, yes. Yes, <laughs> Uh, I no. was actually like a, I was a negative two, like <laughs> like the exact opposite. As I would shoot a Tyrico, this now, guy is Spider might not be back, but shoot our back. So shoot our back. No, I said I didn't say Spider back. I said Shadowlands is back. Man, all the guys in this set are Shadowlands. Uh, Spider looks like they're the bad guys again. Everything is like yep. up is up and down is down. The goats are with the goats. The sheep are with the sheep. Like everything's good again. That's right. Um, this guy is sort of a throwback to Chuta Ruri on the stat line. A bit of force at four goals, Shadowlands, Shigenja, and an ability that doesn't super matter. I think if we're sort of building a cheap deck that wants some cheap Shigenja, Jesse Paul style, we reach for this guy. I don't think this ability will ever be reached for for its ability. A classic, a classic issue with Shadowlands, uh, Shigenja, and also just boxable spider personalities is the Shiho problem, where Shiho is sort of so, so far to one side in card quality that like nothing else is ever really going to compare, right? Uh, and this guy certainly isn't that. But I think that this guy does represent sort of what an appropriate baseline middle personality of like a cheaper Shigenja should be. So this guy's a good sort of middle ground between those two posts. He's not sort of overpowered, but he's not a brilliant. I don't think he fits in a lot of decks uh, unless you're in a desperate need for cheap Shigenja. They're all the unaligned Shigenja, but it's hard to look at this guy and be upset about it. Mm. And he does push a Spider Military deck that's just all four gold cost and less, right? Like you can finally run just 25 guys that are like four gold and less, and this guy fits into that. Battle ability is pretty, man, but... It is something on, you know, in a deck where you'd have a lot of personalities that don't really do anything. So I'm not going to say it, it, it's, like, the unplayably fact, bad. Our moments. The fact that you can consume your bowed guys, I think there's a little bit of juju to that. Like, I have a bowed yeah. guy, I have no straight effect, I need to win this battle right now. Maybe it's like a draft roll, like a draft final pick. You pick up, you throw them in, and she'll help you push through a single battle or something. Yeah, it, it's not the battle ability that you build your deck around, but it's also, the, you know, some number of battles comes down to just sort of quantity of action, who can just sort of do the most stuff. Hmm. And here's a card that sort of does some stuff for you, which is really great. Absolutely. Pokemon, here's the next one. It's Kepeki. He's big. He's back. Hey. 
He's got the Shadowlands trait again. He's not snapping like twigs, but he's also not taking the Imperial favor. So I think this is a move in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, obviously snapping like twigs and asking for too much. Uh, but you do, I do, or again, I'll use a little hand mode. Like, so here's snapping like twigs, and here's take the Imperial favor, and here's like take two actions. And I don't know where the, the trait thing is like way off screen. It's just so like worthless and stupid. I think there might have been something slightly better here than a fear five. I mean, if nothing else for flavor, maybe if you're like 15 or something, just really like, ah, check him out. He's good. He scares people. Um, but I do think that he stacks up within, within the format. Most 15 gold cost guys are unplayable, right? We have the elemental dragons to compare him to. And I like him better than the dragons by a whole heap because, I mean, he's got Conquer and he's got Kensei and he's got Monk and he's got Samurai, and he gives all my other little guys a Fear 2, which isn't a lot, but being able to borrow items and spells, right, like, that's not nothing. Yeah, and that's um, the payoff. So, we're paying 15 gold for, like, a 7 Force Conqueror enchantment basically that says that our fear can hit items and spells and if you're playing this guy you're playing our Jinjin sensei uh to jump in ahead on our previews a little bit and your know, Jinjin sensei says we blow up the attachments that we target so basically 15 gold to say you can blow up their items and spells is that worth it i don't know it, it depends yeah, exactly it depends to what extent you're i like Items and spells will end up be blocking your fear effects, right? Because yep. you can fear through those anyway. If you can make it a sufficiently large fear effect, you can just bow the guy with the item, or just bow the guy with the spell. Bowing the guy with the spell a lot less useful, but you you see what I'm saying? So like I do, um, I, and I, I like I like giving all my 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 horde dudes for two. I fear two probably if they were the three might be a little bit too. I hate giving two Shadowlands guys out of it. Like, what just much of just like, I do the fear too. I mean, I feel like You're breaking up here a little bit. Okay. Let me try. Run, re -run, run that piece of commentary back. Uh, my only other thought is there's a bit of an elegance to this. Only horde people without printed fear ability. You kind of would have liked to have just seen just all horde people. Absolutely. Um, I, it just doesn't seem like that was a necessary. But, uh, you know, uh, from a flavor standpoint, from a, a character, you, it, these big unique personalities are really important to see represented as cards. And I definitely, when I look at this guy, within the context of, of what we do now, he seems big and powerful, and he's a leader, and he teaches people how to scare people. And so I feel like it's a hit on all those levels. I just feel like he's a card, and we talked about it all the time. Like, you put him in a bunch of decks, and eventually you just be like, man, he's not worth 15 gold, and pull him out. For sure, and my decks will start with him in it, just because he's supposed to be in there, and he's big and cool, and he's uh, he's Kempeki, man. You know, I build decks with gigantic, unique personalities and try to duel all the time. I'm like a... <laughs> Of like a Greg Wong esque personality, right? Like I'm like one yeah. guys with this thing that I do, and so absolutely, I will. You know, I'm probably gonna put him next to a bunch of other bigger personalities and try to weapon. Try to, uh, will it get me anywhere? Meh, but I don't really care, right? Like I, you know, I, I want to play Quebec and the uh, deadly. You can't stop so me, off. dead. That's right. It's just like, you know, can't stop, won't stop. But, Go from gigantic personality to little itty bitty personality. Little itty bitty personality. This is sort of a throwback to Kikido no Oni, a uh, cheap guy with the low force hey! IQ and this ability to switch hey! around. I kind of like this guy. You know, my first reading is, oh look, it's a stupid Shadowlands duelist. But I feel like uh, Brian Reese pulled the old switcheroo on everybody. So she's, yeah. this is really oh, a no. four gold for three force guy. Uh, yep. In a little wide attack deck, that's that's perfectly fine. That's exactly where you'll see it. You'll see it in those sort of like here's all my three four dudes for four gold deck. You know, I mean, you can do, you can like I said, you can make that deck with twenty five people or I guess twenty four if you want to run Forgotten Legacy. Um, I do like that this one is plus one plus one for sword. I feel yeah, like sword, sword I'm pretty okay easy to find. <laughs> 
His like <laughs> Where's whole my arm, 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 I don't know. My, I don't know how I'm doing like that. My like spear heavy weapon. And my yard, oh. Yeah. Sword. Like we got swords just lying around. Like Absolutely. I'm okay with swords. Like, you know, we even got a guy that, that makes nice. swords, so that works. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a combo. It's a wombo okay. combo. So how do you feel of the duel of force? I don't care. <laughs> Or thing like I don't feel like you could. Uh, not a tireless open. I could have used tireless open. But how much do you want from your cheap little guy? Right? Yeah, so. yeah. And there's there might be some bully potential there. Um, it's a lot easier to push your force up arbitrarily high than it is to push your chi up. So, uh, being able to enable duels of force might be something. I don't care though. Uh, I think the whole duelist that, component yeah. of this card is just a red herring. I mean, it's just nice for yeah. I mean, it's nice to like give it a give it a sword, and so now it's like five chi, but you drop it back to three chi. But you're still a three chi duelist if they try to challenge your guy with a weapon. Like it's cool, man, and it's just it's. I don't think that Spider did a lot more of those kinds of cards. No. Like I felt like that deck was already pretty locked in. Uh, but at least this one has like an action that they get to take, and they can sort of feel like your cards are sort of <laughs> like you're taking actions, you're doing. You're not really I'm doing too excited. I'm the man. Things are <laughs> and, I mean, people people love to you know to take those sort of superfluous actions, right? I mean, we see that all the time in like Scorpion Dishonored. Oh, this people is a card it. that if I play at the kitchen table, is going to be a lot of like, oh, I mean, I meant to activate my own. Like, I declare attack. Oh, wait a second, I activate yeah. my own Nita, which is a little yeah. bit obnoxious. But, uh, certainly for me, I'm always like come out of the pace, but you know, people, people like to use cards. So. Let's pop over to Tomiyama. Zombie Boy, yeah. The the weirdest the This weirdest one took card. me a minute. Yeah, um, so it's callbacks to different kinds of I mean, we've seen six gold custody two spider guys that sort of come back from the dead as a battle action. Um, we've seen yeah, I, it's just sort of a, a hodgepodge. I feel like they're just like, okay, we need a spider guy. Like, okay, he's a duelist. And you're Jimbo and expendable. And we, they don't have a compassion guy yet. So let's give him a compassion guy. And this yeah. is what we resulted with. This, this compassion ability, you can see a situation in which it is powerful. There's, okay. like, buying a guy is an open. If you're playing the straightening holdings, we got another one in this set. Like a three for three that straightens on your turn. I could be playing... Um, all of all of those, and then Even you can buy attack. him and he's sort of free, and it's like awesomeness. But uh, there was a three three Ronin guy who you could recruit for four gold. An Emperor edition is an open. Do you remember who I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 I do. And like so, there's a star. It's like you have two of him in your provinces, and you have your compassion trigger, and you like buy those two guys, and now you like your your offensive attack on your turn so incredibly so like I could see the scenarios where he had some value. Uh, I I just don't know if he'd get into any of my decks. I guess he's just a duelist so he'll go with some duelist decks. Um I kind of hate I mean I know it's a like a Bushido thing. I kind of hate Spider having compassion cards by the way, even though I mean it's it doesn't make sense. Obviously Spider goes provinces all the time, they go second all the time. So mm -hmm. compassion will be triggered for them a lot. I just as a Spider Man, I don't want to be compassionate. Like I don't I don't want compassion. I don't you don't like feel pity. that you don't feel that Peter Parker is compassionate? Yeah, no, absolutely not, man. Absolutely not. <laughs> Peter Parker's a dick, let me tell you. <laughs> So the problem, my problem with this card is that it, to his Aunt May. he's always late for dinner. That terrible Spider-Man. In his highest, in his highest conception, I think this card is okay. When the compassion trigger is not active, you never want to see him in your provinces. He's the sort of card that, while I can intellectually talk about where he'd be good, I can never actually envision myself putting in a deck. I can never visualize myself flipping this card over in a province. It's just. Six fours or three fours, six gold. It's too much. The expendable trade is too weird. I don't care about Duelist or Jimbo. Um, right. So I mean, the numbers and like the numbers with the keyword with the compassion trade, it like it feels sort of appropriate. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It's not good enough to sort of excite me and get me thinking a lot about it. Um, and yeah, it's just not. It doesn't really fit in the deck, right? There, there's a. There's a disjointedness here that's uh, just noticeable for me. Let's talk about a guy that I can't imagine playing uh, 
Goju Kent here. This is another cheap Shugenja. Four go for three fours. A sort of cavalry train stapled on that could maybe give you some defensive or a little bit of super unit play. And then every once in a while he's got the naval trade. This guy is perfect. He's exactly what you want in your four gold for three fours deck. And Spiders uh, uh, now got a couple of cheap Shugenja. Yep. So that deck can start tapping into the Shugenja card pool without even any work just because you can do it. Um, yeah, and so, and along with you, so you now have, at some point, so you have this go wide deck, you have a bunch of, just here's a bunch of full gold cost cards, but you need to play some actions too. And now this is a guy that will allow you to sort of splash into some ninja cards, right? You can go into your, like a net in the dark, this, and to play all the other cards you still want to play and, mm -hmm. and it won't be that hard to trigger, right? You can splash you know, two or three of those because you'll have six to nine ninjas just sort of... And I think the Shugendra trait is now in a similar way. We're not going to build one of these you know, Shugendra spell decks that have 25 L's. You can put on a few knowing that you'll have yeah. some number of Shugendra over the course of the year. And I think Passion Naval is pretty sweet and uh, on top of Cavalry, like I've built a whole lion deck that's just all about trying to get this guy with cavalry naval going on, right? So that's really cool. Yep, I think that he's just, he's a clearly good card, and a card that I'm going to play a fair amount. And yep. And Nanube Isoto, this is a this is this is yeah, this is my card. favorite spider of of the set, and close to my favorite personality. Of the set. I don't think it's a personality I'm going to play the most, but um. I, like, I mean, I just love this battle action. We've seen it a little bit now. But, you know, the format is so... How many guys are there that make melee three attacks? Like, 50. How many guys are there that make, like, a pure three or four? There's, like, a hundred in the card. Uh, but this is a battle that you, you don't see. Yeah. Um, first off, it's just a straight power guy with lower chi, which is pretty cool to begin with. Uh, but the no abilities and make a guy, so then it's sort of force neutral. I just... I really like this card... It's hard for me to say it's great or even good because it's the sort of card with just they die on holy strike like all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, sick gold for two force is pretty brutal. But you're right, it doesn't care about the force of their guy. It just cares about his chi. So they can have a million force yep. guy as long as his chi is two. It's gonna be a big swap. And yeah. it's a big, it's a big swing. Um, and making the guy is very cool. It's the same ability as the Shadowlands Daimyo that we saw in Twenty Festivals. And I like that little theme of making these two two pud whackers. But you're right, yeah, I don't they, think I don't think you can ever they, really play this card. Kind of. Well, so I I'll tell you where I'll plan to put it. In my you know, in my deck with twenty four super cheap guys, I'll just have twenty one super cheap guys and then, you know, two or three copies of this guy. Uh and I'll just be my only guy who costs more than like four gold and I'll sort of that's sort of where I'll start with testing it out. You can't put it in a deck with too many mid-range personality trying to beat you too, because you're still a military deck. You still need to attack, yeah. and it's it's hard to successfully be an aggressive deck if you have too many two force guys for six gold, because that's so below the curve in terms of force count. But if you're making up your force efficiency elsewhere, then you can absolutely afford to slot a couple of these guys in, and you know, an attack with. One of him and a Shiho and some blank three force guy and the Shugenja to make a fair fight. Like now suddenly all your guys sort of are turned on and kind of doing stuff. Plus your strong, plus your fate hand, and that it, it, it's easy to see a scenario where you just sort of overwhelm your opponent with this death of a thousand paper cuts. And uh, you know, I, I, it's a fine place for spider strategies to be. For sure, yeah, and I like this card. I hope she does find a home. I just worry. I always worry about that turn three attack. She's a guy that you want to buy on turn four, or turn five, after you've attacked once, you've got enough gold to just throw all your provinces out. Um, and you're right, she's a little bit of extra sauce in a deck like that that's a bunch of four fours for th four, three fours for four gold guys. Plus, you know, here's, this, here's the best ability I can find under at six gold or under. Well, except perhaps for Shiho, but again, how unfair is it? Uh, it's a... Uh, but yeah, I mean, I really, you know, so a, a perfectly playable card. So I think Spider came out pretty well, right? And a lot of that's just on the back of, like, if you want 
playable cards, make a bunch of cheap dudes with force, and they'll if pop that's, up. If that's the theme that Spider has got now, cheap dudes with force, then I'm all about this clan. Especially if their flavor is a bunch of ninja and shigenja to fill it out, because these are just <laughs> traits love and enjoy. Uh, and then, of course, you got Pick and Pecky the odd man out, but maybe we'll see a couple more big spider uniques before the day is done. And we're not done with spider. We got one more card. They got a That's spider-specific uh, Shadowlands Shugenja. Daddy's home. He's been drinking, and he's not happy. It's Yajin. I, I love Yajin. Yeah. It's a fascinating sensei, and I think it's a sensei that may be a long time in coming, uh, because there's a whole bunch of these undead cards that have been printed up yeah. till now that you simply couldn't play, because it turns out just buying no com and losing four honor was just like, well, we can't do this. Like This is a thing we get to do. Uh, I tried to play like Plague Zombies and Unliving Legends, and so for me, the trait of not losing honor, like that's a real trait. Absolutely. I mean, and that's the whole card. Uh, people are going to gravitate towards the line about blowing up attachments when you fear them. And that's a big part of this card, blowing up the followers. Sure, turning your fear into other cool stuff, yep. But it's not it's not the point of this card. This is a deck construction sensei. This is the this is the Shadowlands horde, we're the bad guys sensei. And it yep. allows you to play all of these cards that had sort of been pushed to the fringes. And I think that there's a lot of juju in that card pool. So the biggest reason is Daigatsu Zanishi. He's a card from yeah, a couple sure sets back. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Seven gold for four force. He's an undead guy, making the four honor hit. Uh, so completely unplayable before. And he gives all of your undead guys, all of your undead cards, plus one force. So he's the seasoned Ronin of undead, and he gives your he gives your skeletal troops plus one force. He gives your desiccated plus one force. He gives your uh, unliving legions plus one force. Your Voitagi's plus one force. You don't lose any honor from that. Um, yeah, cards, I mean, it, yep. If you thought Voitagi was good at three force for three, but as you see him at four force for three gold, an oath to your faction was five, and then his fear effect skill is something. And oh my God, do you hear that? It's the whistle. It's the train from Value Town, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the Desiccated is a card I'm super excited about. Um, that yeah. a four gold for three force you can recruit from the discard pile. This card was unplayable because of its three honor hit, like how many times can you really equip it? Now it has a yeah. zero honor hit. You can just throw it back on. It's like a super, well, not a super enslaved. Jane doesn't get itself out of the deck, but it's a pretty darn good card. I mean, I'll be fetching that up with the curl, with curl all the time, left and right. Um, Unliving Legion, we talked about skeletal troops. And the diet, you know, the, the undead guys out there aren't that bad. With Hagi, he's just a three gold for three force guy. No, no frills. And he's got a fear effect on your sensei that cares about fear. Yeah, and I, I just think that this card, it, it does what you want a sensei to do, as opposed to like a love letter sensei or conspiracy token sensei. It's like, oh, I got to put these guys in and put those guys in. This is like this is a card that sort of like causes you to go back and just reevaluate the card pool and look at your Shadowlands personalities and see, okay, what what is out here? Or maybe look at your spider personalities that make fear effects. You know, oh, what's this guy do? Oh, he makes a fear four. Well, maybe that's a lot better now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's a lot better, but it's it's a little better. Um, you know, the the sensei still doesn't let you fear just kill things, anything, but it lets you, you know, if you can get it to, like, it lets you destroy attachments, it doesn't let you target attachments, so you still want to have, like, a Kenpeki out and stuff like that. But, like, it it it, it causes you to look at card qual cards and judge their qualitative value in a different way, and yet it doesn't, introduce a whole bunch of unplayable nonsense into the card pool for draft. So, I mean, I really like this guy. Absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm right there with you on that assessment. So, I like Yajin and Sensei. I'm really excited for him, and I'm going to be brewing around him a little bit and look for more content about that. Cool. That's Spider. Um, I think they came out pretty well. Cheap guys with Force is always a good place to be. So, I, I love Spider, and I'm, I'm excited to play some Spider posts. Uh, thunderous acclaim. Yeah, we're always. Well, I mean, we're always looking like Spider. Those are the cards we always jump to pretty quick. Uh, for me, Phoenix as well. But I'm I'm pretty happy with where they're positioned for Gen Con. I think there's a real good chance that as you sort of gear up to move in towards Onyx Existence, there's a chance that you're going to see Spider start rattling off some wins, and that's pretty cool. Hey, hey. All right, guys. That has been enough talk. I am Jesse, and that is Paul, and we will see you next time. 
Ingen 